the light of crowding of life inner life mark 4:15 to 25 those who have attended the seminar have studied this earlier so in the light of that you are looking at how crowding in life happens and you are looking at your pra- your own life and seeing what's the practical way in which this crowding happens for you apply this to your life apply it to your life and write what do you realize how it is in reality Do you remember this area studying? Yes. Now you are reviewing your life, seeing how these are really affecting your life in which area. Path means habits, traditions, addictions and culture. in order to keep your traditions you do away with the commandments of god unbelief leading to hardening of heart and the word dries up worries of this world deceitfulness of riches and other desires choke the word so we are looking at each one you look at your own life and see how it is still crowding your life what are the habits traditions and addictions cultural aspect still preventing us from obeying god and his commandments what are the worries and money matters and other desires prevent me from obeying god's commandments why don't we do one thing make three groups spend time share from your life write and see then only you will know little more involvement will happen how it erodes my available time how 
space in the heart for god is not there because of all these things so see the practicality so share what you learned in the group as individuals news and other information gathering how how is it in other lives he says 3 hours what happens is this thinking takes control of your way of thinking during the day hours when you're not doing it hours thinking you may not listen to the news but you may think you may not listen to the news but you may talk about it others so your mind is preoccupied with this once it enters then a critical attitude comes about these people it's a negative attitude you can note it down a negative attitude this negative attitude will affect your relationships your way of thinking and anger toward these situations anger, anger toward this situation also controls your attitude to life what comes out of your mind is what defiles you second corinthians 10:5 we are destroying speculations and every lofty thing placed up against the knowledge of god and we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of christ previous verse ninth verse for the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh but divinely powerful not uh, for the destruction of fortresses see what is this fortress <coughs> fortress of the evil one fort from the fortress he doesn't attack you directly he sends thought bombs in your mind the thought bombs come through tv newspaper people it is books it is dropped directly into your mind <coughs> speculations arguments you watch a tv program there is a powerful argument presented and one group wins as the argument goes on a temperature also rises up <laughs> you develop a hatred toward that person <coughs> whom they are trying to destroy he presents for money making a argument it looks very attractive you think yes that's not that's not bad about christianity there is another argument goes on you listen to that they present it such nicely that it colors your mind now once you have taken that argument inside your way of thinking will be controlled by that argument now if that argument is how do we know whether it is right or wrong it must be weighed against the word of god the general clear teaching of the word of god if it is against the knowledge of god that's from the bible if we put it in a balance this argument weighs heavier attractive but it's against the word of god only thing you have to do is demolish demolish it solomon says 
what is wrong in accumulating whatever is attractive i did not deny anything that my eye was set so f- f- about 40 years he sp- spends on that accumulation word of god says you shall not multiply silver and gold you will not go for trade ho- horse trade you should not marry foreign wives multiply wives but this man has an argument to override this example if i marry foreign wives the father in laws will not fight with me one way to bring peace to the country is marry those chill girls it looks very attractive accumulate silver and gold he says i didn't accumulate but all is projects building projects were done by forced labor forced labor so he didn't pay for them but he didn't take the israelites for that other people second is the tax was increased some some advisors come and say increase tax a little bit look at gst and others now it is <laughs> the treasury is just overflowing with money <coughs> overflowing with money per month 69000 crores hmm? so one advice looks but the man has deviated from god's god has clear instruction he has given now when the clear instruction is there you may also listen to people who insinuate ideas into your mind you say okay it's good good it's all for the kingdom sake only i make money So how do you distinguish this So the easy thing is Paul says in 1st Corinthians 2nd chapter 3rd verse 2nd and 3rd verse I did not want to know anything else among you. I want to know only bring only one matter Jesus Christ. Because in Athens the common thing is to bring new things into the argument. They always were looking for new things. So Paul says when I came here <laughs> they were very eloquent people to convince people in argument he says third verse and I was with you in weakness and in fear weakness in fear another translation much trembling trembling in fear what is the trembling lest i also will become like the athenians to convince you through arguments convince you through arguments then your faith will be built on human wisdom not on power of god continue verse 4 next and my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom but in demonstration of the spirit and of power hmm. that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men but in the power of god is there a clear attempt in the church to become powerful orator yes yes hmm and say fa <laughs> one hour deep body 
Do you know the danger? <clears throat> that group's faith will be built on human wisdom, rational thinking, rational faith. Reading of books, listening to messages, listening to news, way of presentation, tendency is to move to that. When argument comes, your natural tendency is to win the argument. In Calcutta Bible College, I was staying there before traveling to Gauti. I saw a young man in the Bible College, near the pulpit, holding the mic, trying to speak, I mean, learn oration. It's, nobody is there in front, he is trying to learn it. This is taught in the Bible College also. Instead of depending on the power of God, we can depend on the wisdom of God. There is another great temptation that will happen. To form strategies, planning and strategy. Now, another area that comes in, the management principles are easily brought into the kingdom. <coughs> Hospital caring, once in a campus, one person who teaches management principles came. He is a Christian also, he was teaching management principles. I didn't go for that, but I knew what would have happened. So later in the Bible study for the junior doctors, I asked, <coughs> what did you listen? Some, uh, many people appreciate. One girl, one junior doctor, she said, he spoke about the principles, but he never mentioned the, about the principle. This is another tendency to take principles from Bible without Jesus Christ. This is what Hinduism has done. Hinduism never had women education. They never had medical education accepted by the higher caste. But when missionaries brought this, slowly they absorbed all this. And externally Christianity and Hinduism looks equal. But Christ is not there. Moral living came, everything. So today, they may say, what is the difference? If you run schools, we run better schools. If you run hospitals, we run better hospitals, orphanages. Everything is good work. What is the basis of good work? This, this way of thinking can be put in us. Solving crisis. The factor of love may be excluded in most of the management things, tactics only. Correction. Correction, Bible says, the purpose of correction must be for redemption. But management principle, correction is for improving the institution. Even over deviation <coughs> from the word of God is not observed, um, is not detected. Example, abundance of possession is not the basis of life. But prosperity gospel says you must have abundance. 
That is the purpose of God. It has been swallowed by the church. Now, so when he said, whether I should know all the details that are happening around me and then pollute my mind and then my life, the Lord says, gather all this information, have both eyes and enter into hell. Or with one eye, do you want to enter into heaven? One eye, one sense it will be, may not be having all this information. Now information is thrust on you through the Google. Through the Google, trust on you. Even if you don't want, you will go on looking for details. Hmm? How much time we look on? Yes, let me know it. Why? Knowledge is power. Again, the attempt is to become powerful. So the criteria is, <clears throat> what is essential for life if I don't have time, why do I spend time on non-essentials? You have to decide which is essential. This conforming to the world is a very powerful force, conforming to the world. We'll look at it later sometime, or the areas in which we are conformed. These copying educational system for children, has it come from the kingdom or from the world? Majority of what they are doing, we are doing. It's not from the kingdom. Actually, in, in fact, many of us do not know what is a kingdom way of learning. <coughs> the education has become a means of removing our insecurity. Means of removing insecurity. Then it is going to be a big trap. Insecurity cannot be removed through education. How the crowding of the heart and the desire for single-hearted love for God go together practically. People Here in Otajatram, left many things came to serve the people, the kingdom. After some time, being here, they started interest in various things which they left at home. Buildings, these vehicles. Then one day, one of the fellowship meetings, he was. Then we could have continued happily there. Why should he come here to continue it? Is it a deception? Fourteen chapter, uh, the eleven chapter of Hebrews, <coughs> ninth verse onwards. By faith, by faith, he lived as an alien in the land of promise, as in a foreign land, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, fellow heirs of the same box. For he was looking 
for the city which has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. 13th verse, 13 to 15, all, 16. All these died in faith without receiving the promises, but having seen them and having welcomed them from a distance, and having confessed that they were strangers and exiles from the earth. For those who say such things, make it clear that they are seeking a country of their own, and indeed, if they had been thinking of that country from which they went out, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country that is a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for He has prepared a city for them. No. Eighth verse is by faith. Abraham, when he was called, obeyed by going out to a place which he was to receive for an inheritance, and went out not knowing where he was going. But faith, by faith he lived as an alien in the land of promise, as in a foreign land. Look at that. Even when he reached the promised land, which God promised. He lived there as an alien. Even promised land is not the destination. Are you able to understand it? God has promised a land for that is not the destination, that is not the end. Then he says, he moves on, looking for the city which has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. When we invest our life, should we invest in things that will be burned out, lost? Hmm? Nobody puts the money in a bank which is going to dissolve next day. When the Onion is peeled. <coughs> if you go on peel, peeling it, what will remain finally? If we remove most of the activities we have, remove one after another, what will remain? Is there anything that will remain? Do you have anything? You can say this is the substance. Hmm? All the words we speak every day, remove that. Many of the activities we are doing, remove that. The plans we have, remove that. Material things we have accumulated, remove that. Will there be anything? Anything? See? Yeah. Here is something, that person is there, hmm? a man of God, a woman of God. Most of our wrappings are temporary. Most of what? Wrappings are only temporary. Onion peels. Onion pills. We will be found naked when the outer is removed. When the work is burned, will there be anything left? So, all these died in faith without receiving the promises, but having seen them and having welcomed them from a distance, and having confessed that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. For those who say such things make it clear that they are seeking a country of their own. 
and indeed if they had been thinking of the country from which they went out they would have had opportunity to return so what happens when they left it there no inclination of even returning to it the expression that is used is burning the bridges but most of us even if we burn bridges we know how to build it back here there is no desire to return so there was no struggle for leaving the relationship which developed he says a friend of a god friend of god enoch walked with god as somebody put one day god said come home he did not even think of going back relationship love love of god in a heart is love constraints that love does not seek anything of its own that love should come from god or is it there in us nobody has it to test the love of god is poured into your heart by the spirit of god So it's grace. Yeah. Actually, willpower is human strength, right? Pardon? Willpower is human strength. <coughs> See, enabling grace upon man enables man to decide also. Enables man to decide. Okay. So this is involved. Pardon? Pardon? Yes. Yes. Actually, this technicality is not the important thing. We many of us after learning little theology go for the technicality of the words. I will say relationship. Relationship. Now look at that. Is that love for him ever growing so that many things around me becomes unimportant unimportant they left it they left it without a desire to turn and look at look at it whether it is there or not okay promised land they reach still they look forward so i what i'm asking is is there a clarity a vision in front most of the institutions make their own vision statements to reach there it's not beyond it's always here do you have something which will continue to take journey into christ the journey and the end of journey is christ one person said the journey and the end of journey is christ fixing your eyes on jesus christ look at that verse 12th chapter hebrews 12 1 and 2 
weary and lost heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. Yes. Cloud of witnesses. It's an important thing to know. You are not aimlessly running because there are many who have run ahead of us. This cloud of witnesses are there. So, you should not say that I don't know what will happen. Is it all blind? Is it all imagination? Is it real? The cloud of witnesses the word of God says cloud of witnesses they are standing and watching with the angels how we are running on this race. Spectators. Hmm? How, how happy they are. They have finished the race and in the presence of God. Those who have already finished the race and are in the presence of God. No, no. Many of them did not receive it on earth. Most of them did not receive it, anything that was promised on earth. But having seen it far off, they ran. What does it say? We also may not see it here. You have been praying for people, no change is happening, you may not see it. You are toiling in the kingdom, nothing may be happening as you want to see. It may not be happening. Nothing measurable is there. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. In Isaiah it says, the joy was seeing you and me in the kingdom. When he suffered and died, everybody could say that it was a meaningless death. But he has seen the millions who will be entering. A count, number that could not be counted. So the one area is cloud of witnesses in our walk. Who have finished the race. I think we need to go through Hebrews 11 repeatedly. Then, fixing your eyes on Jesus. The other side it says, do not be conformed to the world any longer. Con do not be conformed to the world any longer. We need not imitate them, we need not join them, we need not think like them. Do not be conformed. That's another subject which, which we need to look conforming. Fixing your eyes on Jesus the author and perfect of her faith. Faith is not what we manufacture. Author and perfecter of my faith, Jesus Christ. Endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. In Revelation he says, If you also suffer like me, I will also give you a place to sit on my throne. If you overcome. The seven churches, the word is overcome. Finally. To overcome, to overcome, to overcome. So how do we encourage one another in this race so that we all will overcome? We are here not to learn something and go back to our old way of life. We have come to seek the new way of living.
Consider him who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart to fall away. You have not resisted to the point of shedding blood in your striving against sin. When we say it is difficult, what's the difficulty we are facing? <laughs> nothing, nothing. Maximum is mocking. Mocking. This is our fear. Why the deception? Why, are, why should we deceive by that momentary pain? Because Bible already says, light affliction but for a moment, eternal weight of glory surpasses all understanding. Okay. Anything else you found occupying your mind? One is education of children, political news. So what are the threats that are tying you, threats of thinking that are tying you with the overload of work? One is anxiety. The anxiety, one example. There was a pediatrician here, very sincere worker, takes care of patients. He was not able to come for Sunday service worships. Why? I cannot trust the junior doctors with these young children. Okay, why don't you trust God and try? He came for two weeks. And he said, nothing happened. <laughs> nothing happened. It's life of children, life of children. There is a feeling in most of us, all those who are working, it is because of me the work is going on. In, it may not be so clear, but vaguely, it's because of me. The graveyard is full of people who once thought they were indispensable to the world. It's a good place to sit and we have been given assignment to sit in the graveyard and write what will be written finally on your tomb or what will be the message people give? <laughs> we can have. We can have. <laughs> we had. We had. Death continues to move on. People depart, but it moves on. At some point, Yes. Am I feeling indispensable? One area. Is it connected to any other feeling? I am indispensable or the work I am doing, the income that I have is indispensable for my family. Yes. Why should you be anxious in responsibility? What will happen if your performance goes down? Not really. There's a customer who blames, then there's only more If more blaming comes, what will happen? Is it linked to our name and fame also? Yes. You have to think. Yeah. Name and fame. So that's a responsibility given to us. That's another word for it. 
another word you have to see the depth of it because what i am telling it's another surgery when you take a patient it's big responsibility but one thing i have learned over the years is i do nothing it's the lord and i have found if enabling go through difficult surgeries without anxiety without anxiety actually when there is lot of bleeding i can pack it and go and sit somewhere it's a dictum for us pack and sit 5 minutes later you go there it will all stop by naturally but many others panic and go on doing things they create more problems but at that time many are not able to rest rest you have to be quick but not hurried you have to be present not be anxious think of a you being operated by an anxious doctor <laughs> <laughs> underlying principle performance perform perform the word we study is climb the ladder climb the ladder you cannot stop anywhere there once you start the climbing the thing we are learning from you is it's not for discussion it's what you are learning is he says there is a responsibility when others hear the word responsibility you also have used the word responsibility for another purpose the other purpose was you said possibility of promotion security in job acceptance in the society the workplace if you are a, once you are careless you can be thrown out not thrown out you can be torn apart they tear you apart so all this are creating anxiety to perform now if such things are crowding my mind is it worth having it because the higher purpose if it is not fulfilled is it worth is that enabling me for transformation or breaking down earlier years of surgery it not to perform to anyone else to perform to myself to be quickest surgeon <coughs> the reason i give so that i can reduce the time in the theater for the patient so the bill will be reduced and as the time is reduced theater time is reduced so the bill will be reduced that is also true that's not but when i wanted to do it fast i was not able to work along with my colleagues who are slow very difficult because when i realized it i was delivered i was delivered hari is not of the devil hari is the devil because that is where we make wrong decisions and we have to come back from beginning to start is hari also for proving multitasking can make you hurry it from childhood if the message for you is not it's not enough your performance is not enough what's the one way 
that you can perform more is to be faster and faster. So, children also, those who are having children who can't, who you want them to perform everywhere the word is hurry. Morning, hurry up. Breakfast, hurry up. Go to bathroom, hurry up. Come back, hurry up. Bus, hurry up. When they come to the bus, the conductor will say hurry up. Classroom, hurry up. When they come back, the night, hurry up to bed. So the song they hear is hurry up. And they become hurried up. Why am I hurrying them up? Is it seen on the road? Faster? Accidents? When police officer was speaking to the crowd, he said, after all you are hurrying up, you may be saving only 10 seconds. But it may be your life also. It may be for your life. And after the 10 seconds you come and lie on your bed and do nothing. <laughs> for another 3 hours. The acceptance by yourself is another great struggle. It may not be to anyone else. In your matter also. If you have always performed without flaw, a flaw, nobody may notice it, but it will be unacceptable to you. <laughs> Two days you may not eat also. So what is the answer? I don't know how to remove it. Yes. We have studied it, we'll remind it. I am already accepted as I am. Four good qualities we had when Jesus Christ accepted us. Helpless, unrighteous, sinners, enemies of God. Enemy of God. Helpless, unrighteous, sinner, enemy of God. Read that from Romans 5, 6, 8 and But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, we shall also be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. So there was nothing good in us when he accepted us. Even now, there will be nothing good. <laughs> he has accepted. So if the highest acceptance has come to me, why should I look for acceptance from others or yourself? One of the powerful pressurization is conforming to the world is look for acceptance from people around. To be accepted by the society. So how, re how real it is for you is the answer for your problem. 
If it is real, you will find the deliverance. You will experience the deliverance. Suppose <coughs> a child is, it is sick and you want to sit near and care for her. Other duties, what will happen to them? We will wait for it. May not enter into it, may not think about it, it will all lie there. Yeah. All those who are very important for you at that time become <coughs> not at all important. Not all important. What do you learn from that? Pressing needs will uh, priority. Priorities. If you are going to hospital to see a patient, it may not be like this. Taking care of your child is different from looking after a patient. Why? Because my child is more important to me than relationship. Relationship yeah. has made it more important. Yeah. So finally it is the love which is going to put on the bond of love. In Colossians we say, which is the ultimate thing in all work and everything. Is it out of love? Is it out of love? When you do things out of love, many other things may not become important also. <coughs> and that can and that true love is only through our Lord. So yes. when we have the true love towards the Lord, the other things that we do, even the basic things, will take its own place. Its own place. It may not be important for you, it may not pay more it's attention. It's like, let me go and do it and come back. Yeah, it's like just if you, <coughs> yes. you want to yeah. come back fast to the, your first love. Love. You want to have biryani there, your washing hand will be very quick. <coughs> <coughs> <laughs> if you don't want the food, your washing will take a lot of time. Children, have you seen them? If they don't want the food there, they will go on standing near the washing machine, go on washing, washing, washing. I think what we are learning now is, <coughs> is our relationship with the Lord becoming real and intimate? Is it real or concept? Imagination. Or is it, it stops in your language, words, because it has become a, what do you call, culture, Christian culture, to talk about loving God, oh, First John chapter 4, last two verses. If someone says, I love God, hates his brother, he's a liar. For one who does not love his brother whom he has seen, cannot love God whom he has not seen. And this command we have for him, that the one who loves God should love his brother also. So the... <coughs> This is where our reality of relationship with God will manifest in our relationship with the brothers around. His word was, whatever moves my, the heart of God, let it move me. So there is no definition of barrier like this. Because love's nature is to love. It always loves. It doesn't classify people in loving. Yes, immediate, when you do good things, let it first be for the brothers. That is that. Because of that, if another person comes, will we stop? 
will again share it. The one who sanctifies is Jesus Christ, the one who sanctified Avi. Avi. So they are your brothers. His brother. His brother. That is the point he brings. Jesus' brother. Yeah, so which means he is my brother. Also. Yes. Uh, but the one who is not being sanctified, is he my brother? That's my doubt. Not brother, but we will be showing love to them also. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, love your enemies. Need not be your brother, but love your enemies. So the nature of love is to love. Yes. I mean, you can't say that only to this person I love. That is not. Christ died for everyone. That is where, in our practical living, is it happening? Beyond this discussion, is it happening? When it comes, we are much restricted. It doesn't go out. That means, whether we have that love, it has to be planned and forced and calculated. Is it so? Or spontaneous? Now, what is clogging us, we know. That's why we are bringing it. Is it clogging or is it widening your space? It's widening. Yes, it's not clogging. That kind of burden will not clog the space. It will increase the space. No, clogging is because of anger. There's no reason. It's not anger, it is burden. Anger. anger is difficult. Anger is. It's sadness. 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 sadness will widen the heart. Sadness. sadness will widen. Space will increase for them. Frustration comes means. I am struggling all alone, on my own. Mm. I, I, so that's also there. So even giving it to the Lord to take care of it in prayer, sometimes... Pastor Wilkerson, when he arranged a meeting for people, Big Ten meeting, people were not... There was no uh, attempt, I mean, they, he was not seeing that they are coming. So he was so burdened about it. His son, elder son, said, Daddy, you are struggling. <laughs> he went home. He went home and he went back to the room, knelt down and confessed that I was struggling. Within short time, the whole hall filled up. He, he writes that, Daddy, you are struggling. One expression of love is definitely if you are not able to reach there. I mentioned it here. Tolstoy was crossing the road. Beggar asked for arms. He put hand. Brother, I don't have any money. That's enough. You call me brother. That's enough. That's enough. So in the many things that we are asked to give, Love your enemy, do good to them, merciful, lend without asking, do not judge, do not condemn, forgive. All that. Is there an abundance to you? It will come. He can give money without love. But at least give. <laughs> That may bring in sometimes. Strange thing is, his friendship with me has become fellowship when I was an enemy of God. <laughs> Same thing will happen. Sometimes the unlovable becomes a good friend of us through the miraculous working of God. In your life, when do you feel you are upset about it or 
you have a hatred toward the responsibility then it comes it is struggling but in spite of the burdens you are unable to continue joyfully it's not a struggle it's carrying a burden you don't give up he says remember him that word is in hebrews endurance the race that is set before us we consider him who has endured such hostility by sinners against him so that you will not grow weary and lose heart say the in love in the beginning husband and wife they always spend time talk to one another look at each other appreciate after some time that that way of expression changes that doesn't mean that love has decreased it has taken another that also need to be understood in work also you can do the same work you don't say i don't have any burden it may not be like that you may continue to pray it will be another level of prayer so we are coming to wholehearted love for god with all your heart soul and mind and strength and we find different things taking the inner space crowded particularly this addicted behavior patterns they are real sp- space occupying lesions your energy is sapped out by these things so if you notice find them out what are the areas in which addictions addictions means dependence has started on it i always go for it if it is not there i feel withdrawn withdrawal symptoms come i try to overcome it many times it's not happening all these are characteristics of addictions the most powerful addiction is self addiction to self which we do not consider as very serious it's a i me mine myself whole space can be occupied by that so for self gratification we can involve in ministry we can involve in charitable work various things second corinthians 6 chapter verse 11 and 12 our mouth is open freely to you o god is our heart is open wide you are not restrained by us but you are restrained in the own affections 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 to be open so one is openness another is restricted in the inward parts constricted restrained the inner parts is heart is one bowels is another really translation so in this is an expression that there is no space for people 
most of it is occupied by me and my my own things space for love space for love the measure of listening to god's word is the measure of decides the measure of receiving from god his blessings so is there space to listen to him space to listen to god space to love him love him means to have his love space for love he brought me to an open space from the narrow space he brought me into an open space silence in god's presence increases your inner space silence what is more in the universe is space than matter what is more in the universe is space than matter in atom also matter is much less in between the electrons the space is more so body is all porous in one sense space similarly more silence in the universe than sound Sci- sound is only around you little little above there is no noise it's all silent little below the depth of sea it is silent inside the body it is silent except for the flow of blood there is it is silent so god's communication is in silence heavens declare the glory of god the firmament says there are no words no speech yet the sound goes all over the universe read 191 to 3 skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech, night after night they display knowledge. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Yes. Next one. Their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. There are no words, no speech, the voice goes out. no speech no words but the voice is heard so listening to the silence is another thing we need to grow listening to the silence be still and know that i am god his communication to us will be in silence most of his presence is by promise his presence is not measured by my emotion in his presence i may be joyful or weepy there is nothing wrong in it but if i don't weep i say he is not present and then particularly looking for emotional experience is also wrong it can be dangerous you can have a intimate time with god without any emotion also don't measure it with your emotion the tendency is to measure spirituality with experiences experiences of certain things happening in you 
body felt so warm a bright light i saw suddenly there was shivering in my body some people experience levitation all these are experiences <laughs> one monk when you are he prays he lifts up and even demonstrated it to people the abbot said you have to stop it you have to stop that willfully because you are concentrating on your experience and on god you will come back to it again to produce it and you can be even deceived if ultimate relationship with god is experience of one of the gifts many people are stuck there they don't grow that's the ultimate many churches teach there was a person in kanu whenever he shares tears will be flowing through his eyes everybody thought he is so emotional but it was very clear it is pathological so i took him to time to listen to him his mother is a similar person anything happens she will weep tears will flow he recognized it's a habit and he probably enjoys it also then he recognized it is necessary to stop it he over god has enabled him to overcome that he can share deeper things without tears after some time it becomes important <laughs> many people the anger is involuntary no <laughs> actually those expressions are not for uh, for us this to show others that you know you are in some kind of it may not be for showing even he doesn't he has it comes out some people when they deliver a message may weep it's not out of compassion inside it's their habit god hates it eh god hates us false prayer we don't we don't god know hates. correct no it could be just a habit as i was saying you know he's not intentionally doing this god does not God hates such a No we don't know his heart may be very clear before God also Because some is doing it like that Yes definitely definitely All of us who say we are tired we have not come to the end of our strength Because the amount of strength in God given strength in a person with one bread piece the prophet walked for 40 days <laughs> hmm why <What? laughs> one woman carried a 10 year old son or more than that age through the blizzard for 17 kilometers the amount of strength when it is needed comes out we are not actually experimented the strength that is given more of it is in our mind also so what should we do to overcome that one is to see why am i getting exhausted in the work then if i am exhausted if i feel it is if it's true it's not deception have the freedom to rest have the freedom to rest if others think 
Can you please excuse me? I am tired. Not becoming angry. Actually at home we have to explain it. My wife sometimes says, speak for seven hours here. When I come back, you don't speak to me. (laughs) 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 But she says you can talk to them, those who come for counseling at that time again. That she points out. (laughs) Now, <laughs> no, that's what I mean. But then you know, after that, you want to rest. And so, it's okay. We, we say very politely, you know, you know, I'm tired like this. Okay, once, twice, twice. <laughs> okay, one day when there is no tiredness, spend time. <laughs> to compensate. That shows that now for you. <laughs> <laughs> that shows that now for you. Anyway. Okay, so in the night take time